Hello, good evening. Um, this is uh, Joy Idris here, uh, getting ready to interview uh, Manira, Manira Dahabi, and uh, or Zahabi. I'll ask when she comes, which is the best way to pronounce that. <laughs> A leadership and development coach, and we're going to be talking this evening about mindset. So I'm just waiting for her to sign up now. Ah, here we go. Hello, Manira. Welcome. I've uh, just uh, said that we're waiting for you to turn up so that we can talk this evening about mindset. And and I'd like to introduce Munira to you. She's a leadership uh, uh, coach uh, and mindset coach. And uh, so really I'm looking forward to this chat this evening. <laughs> so Munira, can you tell us a little something about yourself? Hi, Joy. Thank you for interviewing me. Um, I am. I live in Chicago. It's cold here today. I have lived here for six years. I am a healthcare coach, um, healthcare consultant by profession, a pharmacy technician in one a few moons ago, and uh, now I'm in the coaching field where I bring value to women and others who need it. Lovely. Okay. How long have you been doing that for? When did you move out to pharmacy? Uh, pharmacy, I've been in the healthcare sector for almost 25, 27 years. <laughs> and um, after being laid off after, for, you know, three, after three jobs, four years later, I decided, you know, I, it's about time to start something my, my own. And as I had progressed in my career, I had coached a lot of people along the way. Mm. And I thought maybe it's time that I just do this as a living because I'm so good at connecting with people. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's lovely. So um, I just wanted to uh, talk about mindset this evening because I think it's a very important thing, you know, that, that people need to um, have a, a, a good perspective on their life and what's happening to them. So what would be the first kind of tip that you would give to someone who's looking to find some kind of stability and peace and happiness? So I look at mindset like I would look at a puzzle. You know, yeah. when, when you look at um, life itself, there's a lot of un, uh, un, you know, unpredicted stuff that happens. Yeah. However, you have the end picture in mind. So that's like a puzzle because when you buy a puzzle on a box, you have that picture that's there. Um, when you're choosing your puzzle, and most people don't have the luxury of choosing their life, but they can make something out of their life. So when you look at a puzzle, like if you went to any store and you were looking for the puzzle, you would be looking at maybe vibrant colors or maybe the landscape or the challenge it brings. So that's, you know, in, in persistence, how, how persistent are you if you're gonna buy the puzzle and how, you know, how big of a puzzle are you going to buy a 3D puzzle? So these are all questions that you ask yourself, but that translates to what, you know, life is all about because you can either make it harder. First of all, how you live your life, you, you're born, and wherever you're born is your fate. But how do you make it colorful? How do you make it vibrant so you are not um, creating waves or not stopped in what you're doing? So um, sometimes you have the option, uh, you know, and how you look at your life and you say, okay, how am I going to tackle this? What am I going to do? So first of all, you need to have a mindset you need to your mindset should be how I'm going to tackle this and one of the best advices that I was given when I was creating my you know making my puzzles was always do the sides first okay yes <laughs> that's true so that's what some people say some people say look uh, look and spread out the, the puzzles mm. so many of the times you know when you start looking at things you know as a an um as a um, you know, and as an example, it makes a lot of sense because the first thing we uh, this idea came to me only during Christmas last year when my grandkids had a three thousand dollar three thousand piece um, 
puzzle. Yeah. And what they were trying to do was put them together. So what we did was we had to move the furniture around to put all the pieces together. Yeah. And it was a 3,000 piece puzzle, so it was pretty big. Mm. So first, even though after putting all of the clot, the pieces down, we had to first turn them over. So one thing that you want to do in your life is look at what you have. You know, what are the pieces that you have and how are you going to get there? Well, I started looking for, this was a pretty complex puzzle, but so what I was looking at the sides, mm. we, fo we found all of the pieces that went on the sides because we yeah. didn't know which was which. Yeah. And we had, framework ready. not only framework, but we had to put them all on one side oh. first. Okay. Say, okay, this is what's going to create the framework. Yes. When my grandson, who is seven years old, what he did was he started picking all of the blues and put them all the blues together. Yes. My granddaughter, who is five and a half, she decided she's going to take all of the reds and put them together. <laughs> And all of the yellow ones, which was the main puzzle, she put aside. So somebody got browns and somebody got yellows. So that's the thing is that you sort things out. Yeah. So just like that in your life, you want to clear the clutter first and see what can I do without and how can I move things around so I can make this puzzle. And it's it's. Yeah. Part of mindset because sometimes you find people who are very enthusiastic about making this puzzle, yes. you know, making this picture, yes. and then there are some people who are just, oh, this is too difficult. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, yeah. So which category do you fall in? There's so many things a puzzle can teach you. That's so true. It's a great metaphor. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I'm waiting for you to go even deeper into it. <laughs> it's fascinating. <laughs> You know, and then what we started doing was all of from all of the reds, we started looking at because there, there was a very like about I want to say about a few hundred pieces of the reds. So we started then distinguishing which color reds went with each piece. Yeah. And you know, there was only one lid to the box, mm. and everybody wanted to reference it. So everybody took a picture on their phone, <laughs> yeah, a picture, and then they started zooming in to see which color red. So there was one thing that had just lips, and they were they looked like chapped lips. So one of the one of us took that piece, and then my husband took the blues, a little bit of the blues that was there, and he started putting all of them together by looking at it. Yeah. So everybody got very engrossed. Yeah. yeah. So it became. A, not a struggle, but and the kids became very adamant that they wanted to finish it. Oh, good. What we had done was it was closer to Christmas and we were going to come back home. And, you know, we had to leave. But we had started at least three or four pieces that we had put together for them. Mm. And then they began every day after school when they would come, they had half an hour to mm. look at things and analyze and put together mm -hmm. and just two weeks ago, two days ago that that they finished the wow. whole wow yeah a great but, exercise in uh, cooperation as well coming together towards a single goal so that's that's the thing is like many people think that they're alone in life but if you have the right people in your life that are your parents your family your yeah. friends you know and you know people that who are just acquaintances at in the beginning but they become good friends afterwards that becomes a lot of um it makes a lot of sense because you want you, you when you create when you have the mindset like you want to make this puzzle you have to come up with a plan yeah. of how you're going to do it mm. so the value there is don't think that you're alone seek help as well and there's help available you just don't know sometimes people don't know that there's help available or some people don't know that there is um they can ask for help and and the, and the help can look different as well as you say about the different colors of the jigsaw puzzle so yes. you know, some you know that there are colors or there are aspects of what we're doing together and we're looking for the pieces that fit that um you know maybe we're not we haven't realized that actually 
I didn't think that that would go with that. The brown might not go with the blue, but when you put them together, they do go, come as one picture. So that's really interesting too, you know, that we can bring in diverse elements and together they come as a whole. Yeah. And the one and the one thing that I learned about this is that you always have you start with the end in mind. Right. So you know anybody who is struggling out there, they need to have a picture of what they what it is that they really want and how it's going to look. Mm. It may not be perfect. Yes. Because many times we end up in the wrong box. We are the wrong piece of the puzzle. <laughs> You know, and we are completing somebody else's puzzle. So what about your life? I mean, are you, do you belong in this box? And that happens usually when you're in a kindergarten and you actually have pieces of puzzles when the kids mix them up. Yeah. Oh, this doesn't belong here. It goes over there. Yeah. So those are the things that, you know, I want to, it's, it's a mindset. You have to figure out, one, what you want and how to make it better you have to come up with strategies. So if the border doesn't work mm. and then you go with the colors or you start looking for just unique stuff, like the, this puzzle had a lot of emojis. And so we started looking for the eyes, you know, pieces of the eyes, which is very unique to just that particular thing. And there was quite a few hearts, about seven of the hearts, but you know, they were different colors. Mm. So started getting the pinks together and the blue together and the reds together. So you have to come up with a strategy yeah. that works with you. So many people I've seen are very, um, they're just tired. They give up very easy. Okay. But, you know, life is about persistence. It's about, you know, following your dreams. Yeah, and I think part of it as well is that you could be open to being inspired so that, um, you know, or, or inspired by the fun and the spontaneity of it. You know, instead of seeing it just as a task, which you could see it just as a task and then feel tired and overwhelmed and, you know, stressed out by that. But if you see it as something that's enjoyable um, and, and you have this inspiration of, oh, let's collect the eyes, you know, you know it, it comes like that, doesn't it? It's not just all right, eyes next, you know, it's like, yes. ah, let's get the eyes. Oh, let's collect the yellows, you know. Oh, let's collect the blues, you know. So it becomes a fun thing. Uh, so I think that's a very important aspect of, you know, um, working towards what we really want. And it, and it makes the journey enjoyable. And it is. It's, it, that you're very right. Because the thing is, you have to come up with strategies. Because like Einstein said, you know, you do keep doing the same thing again and again and expecting different results is stupidity, right? Yeah. So, but if you come up with different strategies to tackle it, and I used to have a boss who used to tell me, um, you know, just leave it. If I was writing an, an email or something and it was something that was just very, the words weren't coming to me, he would say, draft it and then leave it and go away. Yeah. Come back later and it's going to work for you. Yeah. And, and you were suggesting that for the kids as well, that they were pacing it, coming home after school to continue a little bit more. They weren't trying to do it all in one, you know, time and space. That's a burnout. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is a burnout, right? <laughs> it would, it would. <laughs> so because, because when I first saw it, I, 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 I like jigsaw puzzles, but when I saw this big puzzle, I was like, oh my God, when are we going to finish it? Yeah, yeah. But it got easier because, you know, Life can be overwhelming. It's if something to be aware of as well, you know, because some people are achievement driven and it's like they, you know, there's something in them that's like, a, you know, I have to finish it, you know, and that's, as you say, it, it leads to burnout. So we need, we need to learn to pace ourselves. Yeah. That's, that's the analogy I could come up when you talked about mindset. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. It's a wonderful analogy. I really enjoyed that. And I think it makes a sense for a lot of people. And, and when you put it like that, it's, it, it, it's really great. People can even be thinking up their own little bits of it, how things go together. And, you know, I remember I was doing a, a jigsaw puzzle with my, um, my young grandchild uh, over that period as well. 
and uh, and we got to the point we were doing like you say the frame and the colors and you know matching up things and then you get to the difficult bits you know which are kind of they're all looking the same and you're not quite sure what to do with those <laughs> you know and, and that can happen in life too you know it's like oh gosh it all looks the same and I'm not quite sure where I'm going I'm in a fog you know uh, but but even then we still found something that we could uh, hang on to as a way to guide our our way to choosing the right pieces so then we started to look at you know the, the shape of the actual piece there's one yeah. bit here and one bit eaten out of it here and one bit so that's got two out and one in where's another bit that can fit with that you know <laughs> uh, so you know there are always as you say strategies that we can uh, come up with and and enjoy doing that too you know oh how, how many have you got that's got three bits on it you know <laughs> you know yes. and so the other thing was that you know once we, we we cleared the living room and then put all the pieces down together we realized that even if we make it we can't make it on the floor so we needed to start making it somewhere yeah. so we had to my son-in-law had to bring a table where we put the, started making the pieces together in a puzzle yeah. on the table and so what we we had the kids do was create that one emoji or whatever they were working on and then put a piece of paper and then transfer it to the table so that's also another analogy is that mm -hmm. if you if you start working on something that's overwhelming and then you have to transfer this knowledge you know and it's called transferable of skills yeah so work with a lot of women who feel that they their strong point is you know when they apply for jobs and they they require accounting skills or they acquire volunteering skills i'm going to tell you a story where i was talking to my friend and she was pretty overwhelmed because she was looking at different job descriptions and she couldn't figure out how she had um the experiences so what i told her was um okay let's talk about this so she, you know, after asking her so many questions, she finally opened up that she was taking care of her sick mother. And she was the only one who knew the medications the mother took. And she would take the mother to the different hospital doctor visits and, you know, all of her appointments. Mm. And I said, so isn't that volunteering? I mean, you have your sister-in-law there, but why are you doing it? Mm. Well, she's my mother, so yes, but you're volunteering to do it. I mean, you have another sister who could do this. Yes. Not about that. And I said, so you are a caretaker and you're volunteering your time because you're giving a little bit out of yourself to this person who needs you. She hasn't asked you and she's not paying you, but that's volunteering. Yeah. yeah. So that kind of, uh, you know, worked with her and then so she put that on her resume and then she talked to me about accounting and she says you know i don't know anything about accounting so i said okay um your husband how are you paying the bills and she goes well he just gives me the money and tells me to take care of the bills and i said okay so what kind of bills do you pay so she, i said break it down for me yeah. so she started putting everything down i said and give me an approximate number of how much money you put giving each the organization yes, yes. and she asked and cell phone and this and this and she just she started writing down and i said and how much is your saving she goes well a little bit and i said it doesn't matter just give me the figure she goes i don't understand this is supposed to be private and everything i said i don't want to know the numbers now do the math you know so how much came in how much did you spend right also so for this month how much did you spend on dinner did you pay for it so everything that you paid out of that money is going to come out from there so she goes this is such a hard exercise and i said well it's going to i'm going to give you the end point once you realize it she put everything down and she had about i want to say 150 dollars in savings and I said, what do you do with that 150? Oh, that's my money that I can go for a pedicure or something. I said, but you're going out somewhere. So what comes in is siphoned off somewhere. That's accounting. You are being accountable for the money. Yeah. She goes, nobody explained that to me that way. I said, well, so this is accounting because what it's in and out. That's what accounting is to keep accountable of whatever is coming in and going out. Yeah. She realized that and she was like, 
okay, so I can do accounting. And she was pretty excited. <laughs> That's After good. The job she was wanting. Yeah, and I she think it's so know. important to learn to see things from a different perspective, to step out of, you know, your comfortable way of seeing things or even to step out of a way that you didn't know there was another way of seeing it. You know, it's really freeing and I and, and I you know I think that's so wonderful that she got excited because she could you know there's a freedom in that isn't there that yes that you've stepped beyond um a, a veil or a pair of glasses that you're seeing the world in a certain way and then all of a sudden you, you you're seeing it completely differently so I you know I can really uh, resonate with that so the thing you know, that's like you said it's a different perspective because mm -hmm. most people just have tunnel vision and they don't see it they don't see what they're yeah, supposed exactly. to and, and this is what, you know, I'm teaching in my, in my group and with my clients is that, you know, we have this certain perspective about life, um, about our relationships and uh, about how we act with people and how we feel. And, and this is just really a way that we've learned to be, uh, you know, in our life. We've learned to be a victim, for example, or we've learned to be a bully or we've learned to be, you know, um, uh, self-sacrificing or you know there's all these different characters that we have and it's not until we understand that there are actually different ways of being or different ways of looking at the world that we can be an empowered woman you know that we can be uh, somebody who's kind but doesn't have to uh, give everything away that it's you know we can actually access our own abundance and and just let it flow easily from us without any um, feeling that we're depleted you know so it, it's very important I think to see that it is possible to have different perspectives yeah thank you for sharing. And, and I and this is my, my um, theory is that you know many times we just sit there and we feel like we are stuck in a box and people always often tell you to think outside the box yeah why don't you just think outside the box well you could think all day or all your life and you could never do anything about it but what i do is i teach people to get out of that box yeah 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 and and me too so, so we're on the same wavelength there <laughs> it's wonderful I'm, to get out of the box <laughs> yeah i i I'm, uh, you know people used to tell me that all the time say think outside the box well thinking is redundant yeah Hey. Why, why don't I just help you get out? I mean, let me help you see a different way and then help you get out of it because that's the only way to do it. Exactly, exactly. People need to know how. Is it all right telling people to do it, but they need to know how. This is the important part, yeah. Oh, it's been lovely talking to you. Have you got anything else you'd like to say? I'm, I'm enjoying this conversation. <laughs> Thank you. No, um, I mean, there's a lot to say, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I just I just urge women and I urge people to think about it a different way to yeah. think about it a different way there is always a different perspective yeah. so if you can't look at it and can't find the answer always seek help yes yeah there's people who want to help you yes that's brilliant thank you Munira it's been really enjoyable having you today and um, what can you just let people know what your your page or your group is? Do you have a group or just a page? Or I have um I have a group as well. My group is Venturing Women on Facebook. Yeah. I have a company page called Kismet Ventures Inc. Okay, you know, and then that's also my website. Yeah. And you know, if people can contact me, and I teach people around the world, so I don't have you know Zoom is wonderful, so that yeah. would be and your way to do this but yeah if you need help i am more than willing to talk to you that's great thank you very much it's an honor thank to you time with you okay and i hope to speak to you again soon and maybe you can come back sometime and we'll speak some more <laughs> thank you joy i really appreciate it lots of love bye bye, -bye.